A newly revised coronavirus model forecasts that the U.S. death toll will reach nearly 180,000 by October 1, and some 33,000 lives could be saved if 95% of Americans consistently wear face coverings in public. The virus has been blamed for over 120,000 U.S. deaths, the highest toll in the world, and more than 2.3 million confirmed infections nationwide. The modeling released on Wednesday by University of Washington researchers forecasts 179,106 deaths. The school's Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation new projections consider mask wearing at the current reported rates. But figures from the IHME estimates that the numbers would drop to 146,047 if most of the population used face masks. Current modeling is down 22,000 from the last prediction for deaths by August. By August 1, 5,000 lives could be saved, September 1, 17,000 lives saved and October 1 a total of 33,000 lives spared with majority use of the nose and mouth coverings. Daily deaths would drop from 613 to 87 by October 1. A major difference could be seen as soon as August 1 when currently projections say there will be 551 daily deaths but 224 with 95% face mask use. The gap would increase by September 1 when the death rate will be 540 per days at the current rate but 96 with most of the country wearing face coverings in public. The current daily infection rate for 61,000 by August 1 could drop to 15,000. People need to know that wearing masks can reduce transmission of the virus by as much as 50%, and those who refuse are putting their lives, their families, their friends, and their communities at risk, IHME Director Dr. Christopher Murray said in a statement on Wednesday. He added that even as states open up, the U.S. is still grappling with a large epidemic on a course to increase beginning in late August and intensifying in September. Currently only Texas and Florida show signs of reaching a level of a resurgence before October 1 that could include the re-imposition of strong social distancing mandates. The U.S. could need 23,000 hospital beds by mid-September compared to the almost 21,000 today. The mandates would be enforced when deaths per day reach 8 per 1 million people. These factors are vital in our projections and highlight how many lives can be saved, Murray added. While some of the increased numbers of cases can be attributed to more testing, the percentage of positive results is also climbing. The average number of tests has risen 7.6% over the last seven days, according to data from the COVID tracking project, while the average number of new cases rose 30%. States are attempting the difficult balancing act of preserving health and enabling economic recovery, Murray said. Going forward, IHME will continue to forecast for different scenarios including planned intermittent mandates in the fall when deaths per day may reach higher levels within each state, recognizing that solutions are not uniform across communities. On Wednesday, three states reported record increases in new cases Florida, Oklahoma and South Carolina. Earlier this week another seven states had record highs Arizona, California, Mississippi, Missouri, Nevada, Texas and Wyoming. The surge in cases nationwide of nearly 36,000 on Tuesday was the highest since a record of 36,426 new infections on April 24. California reported over 7,100 new cases, an all-time high. Florida's single-day count surged to 5,500, a 25% jump from the record set last week and triple the level from just two weeks ago. In Texas, which began lifting its shutdowns early on, on May 1, hospital admissions have doubled and new cases have tripled in two weeks. Governor Greg Abbott said the state is facing a massive outbreak and might need new local restrictions to preserve hospital space. The Houston area's intensive care units are nearly full, with coronavirus patients filling about one in four beds, and two local public hospitals are running at capacity, Mayor Sylvester Turner said.
In Arizona, emergency rooms are seeing about 1,200 suspected COVID-19 patients a day, compared with around 500 a month ago. If the trends continue, the state will probably exceed its hospital bed capacity within the next several weeks, said Dr. Joseph Gerald, a University of Arizona public health policy professor. We are in deep trouble, said Dr. Gerald, urging the state to impose new restrictions on businesses, which Governor Doug Ducey has refused to do. Infectious disease expert Dr. Peter Hotez of the Baylor College of Medicine in Texas said he worries that states will squander what time it has to head off a much larger crisis. We're still talking about subtlety, still arguing whether or not we should wear masks, and still not understanding that a vaccine is not going to rescue us, he said. Some states also broke hospital admission records, as did North Carolina and South Carolina. North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper, a Democrat, ordered people to wear masks in public as the daily count of hospital admissions and new cases hovered near records. In Florida, several counties and cities recently enacted mask requirements and cracked down on businesses that do not enforce social distancing rules. By contrast, New York has been reporting positive test rates of around 1%. The governors of New York, New Jersey and Connecticut on Wednesday ordered travelers from nine other U.S. states to quarantine for 14 days on arrival as COVID-19 showed signs of surging in areas not hit as hard by the initial outbreak. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy said the tough new mandate was the smart thing to do after the United States recorded its second greatest increase in COVID-19 cases since in early March. We have taken our people, the three of us from these three states, through hell and back, and the last thing we need to do right now is subject our folks to another round, Murphy said. COVID-19 is the respiratory illness caused by the coronavirus. A White House spokesman, Judd Deere, said that he did not believe the quarantine applied to President Donald Trump, who just returned from a visit to Arizona and was scheduled to be in New Jersey this weekend. The President of the United States is not a civilian. Anyone who is in close proximity to him, including staff, guests, and press are tested for COVID-19 and confirmed to be negative, Deere said. New York City and surrounding areas were the early epicenters of the U.S. coronavirus pandemic. More than 31,000 people have died of COVID-19 in New York State, roughly one quarter of the U.S. total, according to a Reuters tally. The 14-day quarantine applies to visitors from mostly southern states, Alabama, Arkansas, Arizona, Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Texas, Washington and Utah, as well as tri-state residents returning from those areas. Violators of the order, which takes effect from midnight, could face fines of $1,000 for a first violation and $5,000 for repeat offenses, Cuomo said. While the United States appeared to have tamped down the outbreak in May and states lifted sweeping stay-at-home orders, testing suggests the virus is moving into rural areas and other places that were initially not hit as hard. The pandemic may also be resurgent in U.S. states that opened earlier than others in a bid to blunt the devastating effect of coronavirus restrictions on workers and local economies as unemployment rates shot up. Worldwide, more than 9.2 million people have been confirmed infected, and close to half a million have died. Thank you for watching our video. Please show your support by subscribing to our channel and turn on the notification. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and Reddit for more videos.